All right. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to the Million Mom Movement, our Fierce Friday calls. My name is Shari, and I've been with the council for ooh, about two months now. Wow, time really does fly when you're having fun. Um, and uh, I'm passionate about the Million Mom Movement for so many reasons. First and foremost, as a mom, I'm a mom of three, and I'm a grandma to one and another one on the way. <laughs> Uh, which is very exciting. Uh, but as a mom, it's very important to me that my children and my grandchildren learn the foundation um, of of being healthy, right? I want them to be empowered. I, and that, of course, entails them knowing and understanding the role that their gut plays, understanding the role that toxins in our environment play into that, um, and knowing how to best protect themselves and how to be conscious consumers. Um, and the Million Mom Movement does such a great job at helping families people, individuals learn and 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 learn what they need to know in order to become empowered. And also as a holistic nutrition and health coach, um, I love what the Million Mom Movement embodies because it creates that awareness that I've set out to do in my own practice. And so I'm also joined with amazing, amazing council members, all with their own reasons for being here. Um, it's Naeva and Carmela. And our newest member, Tammy, who I'm so excited, is here with us now. And Tass, who might not be able to join today, but um, yeah, hopefully she'll be able to, to, to come on at some point. Um, and so today, our topic is our gut health and the alternative solution to our amazing biomedic. And this solution is for anybody who is uh, dealing with celiac disease, right? Or any type of gluten intolerance or sensitivity um, that makes biomedic a little bit more of a difficult option. And we are gonna cover not just the solution, which we are excited to get to, but also, you know, one of the most important factors that that is currently threatening our gut health and therefore our overall health. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Tammy, um, or is it, sorry, Kimberly. <laughs> I'm gonna pass it over to Kimberly actually, because she is going to come on as an honorary member and do our in the news piece. Thank you, Kim. Hi friends, so happy to be here. Thank you all for being here. This is such an amazing topic, obviously so many of us are working with friends and clients that have gluten intolerance. So is gluten intolerance linked to glyphosate? So they're sharing that gluten intolerance and celiac disease are a growing problem worldwide. An article written by independent scientists links gluten to intolerance and glyphosate that is used on wheat. There is a sharp increase of people suffering from gluten intolerance over the past 20 years in direct correlation with the increased use of glyphosate as known as shown in the graph. And just FYI, remember glyphosate is Roundup. So it's not just glyphosate, it's Roundup, the weed killer. So you can really see in the chart how much, how much growth and um, illness has been happening for these past 20 years, which pretty much that's like all of us in this age category that we're here. So what is gluten? Gluten is the main storage protein of wheat grains. Gluten is a complex mixture of hundreds of related, of related but distant proteins, mainly gladian and glutenin. I might be saying that wrong. Similar storage proteins exist in, what is this word? Would you say, Naeva? Scalene and rye. Hydrogen, Sec sorry, Secalin, maybe I'm not I sure how to do that either. Okay. Hydrogen, um, oh my god, I'm like, are you sure you want me to read this? Hor Horden and barley and um, oh, avians in, in oats. I'm totally killing this. I'm so sorry, friends, and collectively referred to as gluten. So, all those words that I could not pronounce basically are gluten. And what is gluten intolerance? Gluten intolerance is a wheat-related disorder. Symptoms occur after eating foods that contain gluten, such as wheat, barley, rye, and symptoms can include stomach pain, bloating, diarrhea, na nausea, anxiety, headaches, joint pain, muscle pain, and feeling unwell. 
So let's say, what is celiac disease? They're sharing that celiac disease is a chronic digestive order resulting from an immune reaction to glenad and the gluten protein found in wheat, barley, rye, and sometimes oats. In celiac disease, the body's immune system attacks its own tissues, which is interesting to say that out loud. I don't, yes, I think there's more to it than that, but triggered by gluten in the diet. It only happens in people who have genetic vulnerability. It involves inflammation and destruction to the inner lining of small intestines and can lead to malabsorption of minerals and nutrients. Celiac disease is a complex condition associated with a higher risk of thyroid disease, cancer, and kidney disease. And there is also an increased risk to infertility and birth defects in children born to celiac mothers. Symptoms may include chronic diarrhea, weight loss, and fatigue. Celiac disease can affect a person of any age. There is no cure. Hmm. And only treatment is to be a, glut be a gluten-free diet. So what does glyphosate have to do with gluten intolerance and celiac disease? Glyphosate is the active ingredient and in herbicide in Roundup produced by Monsanto. There are a number of other chemical companies who also sell glyphosate products, but Monsanto is by far the biggest. Glyphosate is sprayed on the majority of wheat worldwide, and in the late 1990s and the beginning of the new millennium, Monsanto developed genetically engineered Roundup-ready soybean, corn, and cotton, and canola with enabled, which enabled them to spray Roundup directly on the crops without killing them. This is at a huge impact of the qu quantities of Roundup sold with Roundup use increasing about 15 fold between 1994 and 2017. When we eat sprayed wheat, we ingest some of those chemicals. Glyphosate is known to kill gut bacteria like lactobacilla and bio... Oh. What is it? Bio. Bio, so bio bacteria. Thank you. Which is associated with celiac disease. Glyphosate also promotes an overabundance of of C of of C diff, a colostrum difficile, which is a bacteria in the intestines that can be serious like gastrointestinal infection. So celiac disease is associated with deficiencies of iron and vitamin D3, molly, sorry friends, molly day something, celium and <laughs> like, oh, and coal, what would you say this word is, Naeva? Cobalum lamin. Okay. Yeah, and selenium. At least it's just great. It's okay. Sorry. An overgrowth of pathogens in the gut and at the expense of beneficial biota. Impaired to serotonin, signaling an increased synthetic of, of toxic metabolites like C, like P cereal and <laughs> I, oh, I feel like Carmela should just come in and start reading all of this. this is so sad. So anyway, the study shows that all of these features of celiac disease can be explained by glyphosate's known properties. <clears throat> These include disrupting the shikimate pathway, altering the balance between the pathogens and beneficial biota in the gut, chelating tran transition metals, as well as sulfur and sel selenium, Inhib inhibiting cychrome, P450 enzymes and a key system-wide pathogen in celiac disease is impaired sulfate 
supply to the tissues. And this is also a key component of glyphosate toxicity to humans. In, two, in 2013, a European study analyzed 182 urine samples from 18, um, 18 EU countries for glyphosate residue and found 44% contained quantifiable levels of glyphosate, which is likely due to their diets. Another US study, um, Rancho Bernardo study tested urine samples from 100 people in California between 1993 and 2016, showed a huge increase of glyphosate and the metabolite. Uh, Amnomethyl something, which would be AMPA M residues. Help me out. What is it? I think we can go with AMPA on this one. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, friends. Glyphosate levels detected rose from the average of 0 0.024 to 0 0.314. And in 70 of the 100 people tested up to the average of point, or 0 0.449, an 18% increase. So the average AMPA levels rose from 0 0.008 to 0 0.285. And in, a, and in 71 of the 100 tested people up to 0 0.401 is a 50% increase shown in the graph below. So just so much rise with people having glyphosate in them. So monitoring the glyphosate levels in food and in humans has been inadequate worldwide. In New Zealand, pretty much, and in New Zealand, pretty much non-existent. The common practice of desiccation and ripening with glyphosate right before the harvest ensures that glyphosate residues present that are present on the food supply. So the conclusion would be that the use of glyphosate in our food is damaging to our health, not only if you are gluten intolerant or have celiac disease, it's pretty hard to avoid eating food without eating food without ingesting some levels of glyphosate. Even if you don't eat bread, most packaged foods will have ingredients that have been sprayed with glyphosate. For example, cereals, oats, cookies, crackers, flour, beer, wine, milk, vegetable oils, as well as fruit and veggies. Um, so to so um, the only option is to eat organic. And even with organic, there is sometimes not 100% gluten-free. Um, from glyphosate. So Monsanto is telling us that glyphosate is safe. They put huge sums of, they pay huge sums of money to, to regulate agencies as well as pay for studies that will show it to be safe. Just like the tobacco companies used to do. And who do you believe? Studies paid for by Monsanto or independent scientists. Here is what you can do to end the glyphosate madness. The first is voting with your wallet and buy organic food and have Purium come into your life and then grow as much food as you possibly can yourself. Don't use Roundup, speak out and educate people and lobby for change. And also go and see Common Ground. That movie is so powerful, by the way, friends. Oh my gosh. So thank you for your patience with all these big words with me. So our next piece of information here is again about glyphosate, the cause of gluten intolerance. So many people are having trouble digesting gluten and some get very sick after eating it. Why all, the, why all of a sudden in the last two decades has gluten become so hard for people to digest? People had no problem eating pizza in the 1990s. Today, just one bite can cause severe digestive distress for many. Our grandparents didn't have these issues with the gluten, so why do we? 
Blaming gluten is like focusing on the smoke instead of the fire yeah. as, oh, go ahead. As I share um, the number one best-selling book, Food Sanity, for seen for forest fossil evidence forensic. of our, sorry, for forensic, forensic fo fossil evidence of our caveman ancestors prove that we've been eating gluten for three, three and a half million years. According to research conducted by the University of Utah, 40% of our ancestors diet was gluten. So a major reason so many have developed gluten intolerances is because they are consuming a chemical called glyphosate, the active ingredient in Monsanto's herbicide Roundup. This toxic chemical kills weeds, but also destroys the lining of our colon, creating leaky gut. This allows toxins, microbes, and undigested food particles and antibodies to escape from our intestines and travel through throughout the body via the bloodstream. And we cannot, so we cannot put blame on the gluten. In a study published in the Journal of Interdisciplinary Tox Toxologic Tox. Toxicology. Toxicology, thank you. Researchers found a profound link to people ingesting glyphosate and developing celiac disease and gluten intolerance. This herbicide also destroys the intestinal walls of fish. Now that glyphosate is getting the attention it deserves, losing a two billion verdict and being labeled as a carcinogen by the World Health Organization, the state of California and the state of California, hopefully there will be more focus on its causative relationship to the escalating epidemic of gut disease. So how can we avoid consuming glyphosate? Unfortunately, glyphosate is showing up in everything from fruits and veggies, wine, beer, drinking water, chips, honey, infant formula. So in Food Sanity, there were several tips shown how to avoid consuming this toxic chemical. So a few tips are shop from USDA certified organic. Roundup is a prohibited Roundup is prohibited on organic crops. Blood tests in people that eat organic food show less glyphosate in their system. The second would be to eat locally grown produce, like at your co-op or local farmer's market. The farther your food travels, the more processed, it, the more processing it endures in the greater risk of contamination. Grow your own produce. It doesn't have to be an elaborate garden. Um, this person has a tiny garden that only has 10 to three feet and they grow their own herbs, organic tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, lettuce, blueberries, squash, and strawberries. So, and the fourth is to not use Roundup. You can make your own weed killer using vinegar and Epsom salt. This will kill the weeds by being, while being environmentally and pet friendly. So if you want to get non-toxic pre-made product, the one that they recommend is called Dr. Krishner's Natural Weed Killer. It's made with ocean water and food grade vinegar. The ocean water is collected at high tide and contains 70 minerals and trace elements, including magnesium, calcium, potassium, and this enriches the ground, making it more suitable for future plant growth. Just say no to Roundup, please. So this is so great. Appeals to court blocks California warning requirement for glyphosate, right? Like let's not be blocking this at all. So, So on November 7th, a divided federal appeal court on Tuesday upheld an injunction barrier California from requiring business to warn consumers that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup weed killer causes cancer, which we know is totally not true, or it's truly true that it does. In a one to do, in a one to, in a two to one 
decision, the ninth U.S. current serps, sorry, I can't even think what that word is right now. Sorry. Um, circuit Court okay. of Appeals said it was unconstitutional for California to require Bears, um, Bears Monsanto, which makes Roundup and some agricultural products to provide the warning under a state law known as position proposition 65 so that's really important for us to know that they're not going to put the warnings on there the court said the warning conveyed the at best dispute message that glyphosate is unsafe and that requiring objectors to convey the controversial farcity cont contested message that they fundamentally disagree with violating the First Amendment. The Office of California Attorney General Rob Botton, which defended the warning, did not immediately respond to the request of, of request for comment. Neither Bear nor lawyers from the company and the agricultural producers immediately responded to the similar requests. No surprise. Thank you so much, Kimberly. I know that that wasn't easy. Those were really um, intense articles and there was a lot of words in there, but you have to take a look at the chat because you're getting so much love. Uh, you did a really good job and we thank you for for, for doing art in the news today. Um, and, you know, there was so much, so much important information in those articles. Um, the first article specifically about celiacs really highlights the fact that celiacs in essence is an imbalance, right? There's a really large imbalance happening within the body, within the gut, um, that's creating this intolerance to gluten. And that's really important that we know because when we look at glyphosate, well, glyphosate at its probably least of what it does in the body is that it also creates an imbalance. So it's very interesting how the symptoms of both of these um, really, really are really parallel, right? And so the link has been made and we have to ask ourselves, like how much of a factor is glyphosate when we are dealing with celiac disease or any type of gluten intolerance? And I'm gonna share my screen with you. So because we uh, want to be raising awareness to all of the different um, aspects of this and why it's so important that we, you know, in order to talk about why it's so important that we focus on our gut health, we know that 70% of our immune systems in our gut, we know that 90% of our serotonin is produced in our gut. Um, we know that the gut is responsible for so many of our bodily functions, right? It's, it, it helps us with absorption. Um, it helps us with digestion. It is where, um, specifically when we're talking about absorption, that's where our nutrients, key nutrients are being absorbed into the body. Um, it aids in the functioning of our immune system, right? It aids in our mood. It basically has um, a part to play in every single aspect of our health. And so we need to not just take steps to protect it, but we need to fiercely protect it, especially today because of some of the factors that are threatening it. And the biggest factor threatening our gut health today, whether we are dealing with celiacs or not, is in fact glyphosate. And that's why the, the focus on glyphosate today is so important. Um, and so I wanted to pull up the detox projects, uh, one of their articles. It's a very extensive article. And for the, the sake of time, I'm going to kind of go through it, um, a highlighted version of it. But I really um, highly suggest that everybody will share the link in uh, the chat, of course. Um, I, I highly suggest that everybody takes a look, an extensive look at this. What I love about this article is that every study that's mentioned here, there are links that you can click that you can then get the full study and really, you know, you can go as deep with this as you want to, all of the information is there. And I think that that is so important, right? We need to be able to readily get this information and of course also share this information. So articles like this make this very easy to do. Um, and so the detox, the detox project, for those of you who are not aware, are the ones who have given Purian their golden seal of approval for their biomedic as being an effective 
glyphosate solution. So we're going to take a look at what they have to say. I'm just gonna, for some reason I can't read the full, I can't see the full article when I have my window here opens. So just give me one second. All right, perfect. Okay, so the glyphosate in our food and water. So as we already know, glyphosate is in about 75% of our food and 90% of beer. And it's virtually everywhere in our food chain, right? And as a consequence, glyphosate is regularly detected in our bodies. At the levels detected and even below, several converging lines of research in laboratory animals suggest that glyphosate-based herbicides may be endocrine disruptors and alter li liver and kidney function. So why is glyphosate in our food? Well, glyphosate-based formulas, the most common being Roundup from Bayer Monsanto, are the most widely sold and used pesticides globally today. They're used on our crops during cultivation not only to desiccate the crop before harvest, but also more intensely, intensively during the cultivation of the eight of the 80% of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, that are modified to tolerate Roundup. So is it just in our crops? We know that glyphosate is not just in our crops. It's also used in parks, in gardens, along roads and railway 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 tracks and in cemeteries. Since gly glyphosate's main mode of action in plants is absent in animals, it's considered to be one of the safest pesticides. I can't even, the words don't even come out of my mouth easily. Um, even safer than table salt, according to Bayer Monsanto. So are there high levels of glyphosate in our food and water? Well, we know that there are. The presence of glyphosate residues to is tolerated by most government regulators at high levels in food and tap water. But after more than 30 years of a don't look, don't see policy on glyphosate secondary side effects, many independent studies in recent years have suggested that glyphosate has worrying health effects at levels regularly detected in our food and our tap water. So here are where all of the studies start to be listed. And I'm just gonna go over a couple of them. Like I said, all of these links here, when you click on these links, this is how you can go and find and read the full on studies. Um, glyphosate residue has now been found in a range of human samples. Some samples of this are in 2016, the urine of people across America was tested by the University of California using validated methods. 93% of the urine tested, 93% of the urine tested by the UCF, UCSF tested positive for glyphosate residue. The detox project assisted in the collection of those samples. There was also a 2019 study, a unique hair testing project involving 23 members of the Jap Japanese parliament and organized by the detox project as well with local partners shocked the country after it was revealed that the majority of the politicians had long-term exposure to a variety of pesticides, including glyphosate. The hair testing results were announced in the Japanese House of Representatives in early 2019 and have led to a growing call for a change of approach to pesticides in the country. So do studies regularly find glyphosate in our urine? Well, every single study that has measured for glyphosate residues in human urine has found it. So in, in June of 2022, uh, the CDC published a massive study that showed more than 80% of urine samples drawn from children and adults in a U.S. study contain glyphosate. And it's a study, and it's a finding that I'm sure we'll all agree have found scientists calling disturbing and very concerning. One of the other recent surveys performed by Moms Across America and Sustainable Pulse measured glyphosate levels in the urine of 85 U.S. citizens. Um, Comparable levels have been detected in a survey performed on farming and non-farming families in Iowa. Glyphosate was also detected in the majority of samples, including more than 95% of children's urine samples, a maximum of 18 parts per billion. And in Europe, a sur survey by Friends of the Earth across 18 count countries found glyphosate in 80 out of 182 urine samples taken from volunteers. Why are GMO crops a main route of exposure for glyphosate? Well, we know that the cultivation of Roundup Ready GMOs has considerably increased the amount of glyphosate that we're finding in our food and feed. And that's because Roundup Ready plants don't, they don't degrade glyphosate, but tolerate it. 
right? So they accumulate Roundup residues within, like, within them during their growth. Um, so it also mentions here that glyphosate has among the highest maximum residue limits of pesticides with up to 500,000 parts per billion authorized in some GM feed. So why is that important, right? Why should we uh, be so concerned about the amount in feed? It's not food that we're going to be eating, but it is the feed that the animals eat, right? And besides, of course, loving animals and not wanting them to be ingesting anything that we wouldn't want to be ingesting ourselves, we have to look at it from a point of people who are eating meats. Well, if you are eating meats, they have actually found amount of glyphosate in animals such as cattle and pigs. Now, those amounts are accumulating in their bodies, in their internal organs. Some of the um, some of the highest concentrations were measured in the lungs and the heart and the kidneys. So this strongly suggests a bioaccumulation of glyphosate in internal organs, which is contrary to the common belief of rapid elimination, right? And so if we know that this glyphosate is actually accumulating in the animals that then we are eating, we have to be aware that we are eating this from an animal who was not in very good health. Because if we know and we understand what glyphosate does is it accumulates within our body, does the same in the animal, and then we are ingesting that animal, well, then we are taking on that unhealthiness, if you will, of the animal. Um, and it really, it really sheds light on um, a very common belief system as that that is out of sight, out of mind, right? It's not just... <clears throat> you know, we eat something and then we can just forget about it. It's gone. What is it doing inside our bodies and where did it come from? So these are questions that we need to start asking ourselves. So how much glyphosate is found in tap water? Well, permitted levels in tap water reach 700 parts per billion in the U.S., which is particularly high for a pesticide and are at 10 parts per billion in, in the European Union. So there's also, you know, if we wanted to look at lists of foods, you can readily find these lists. And I know that uh, Kimberly went over these a little bit as well in some of the first articles, but some of the foods that are highest in glyphosate residues are wheats and oats and barley. Um, we know that it's in soy and almonds and apples and dry edible beans, lentils, chickpeas, uh, peas and grapes, rice and sunflowers and honey. Honey is also very regularly contaminated. So I'm going to go down a little bit more. Um, it's also found in pet food, which is something that we have spoken about before and makes me that much more thankful that we have a gut repair system that helps even our pets to, detoxif uh, to det detoxify glyphosate. Um, but it is unsafe on any plate. And if, if this article points to anything, it's that this is a global issue. This is a global problem. And when we look at some of the cereals, for instance, that have have been found to contain really high levels, which we can find in the poison in our daily bread. And that's, um, that is a comprehensive glyphosate testing that was put out by the Detox Project. And we've shared this, I know, many times here on the Million Mom Movement. Um, and we can share the link again. This really gives you a very extensive list of not just the, the foods that are contaminated, but where these foods are sold, right? Um, and so you can take a look there. I highly recommend everybody taking a look there because this is how we start empowering ourselves as conscious consumers. Uh, but when you look at the cereals, some of the, the cereals that contain the highest amounts are Fruit Loops and of course, Cheerios. And I know that this hit me really deeply as a mom because uh, before I had much health knowledge, I was giving my daughter Fruit Loops. In fact, it was her very favorite cereal. And fast forward to when my boys were born, I thought that I was making a much better choice by giving them Cheerios, right? Less sugar, heart healthy, um, only to now find out um, that these are cereals that 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 rate very high in glyphosate. So this was this article was an important, I really wanted to bring this article to light uh, because there is a definite link here, right? We know what glyphosate does. We know that it um, takes hold, it attaches itself within the body, it creates an imbalance, it damages our gut microbiome. And so people who are dealing with celiacs is, is, is also dealing with not just um, nutrient imbalance um, deficiencies, but overall imbalances within the body. And so now I'm going to pass it over to Carmela. Carm, sorry, I can't see anybody. So 
Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, yeah there's a wonderful yeah. article. We love the Detox Project. We love to refer to them. So we're going to be dropping so many links here today, chocked full of information for you guys for your research. So just remember to click on the links on your devices and just have it up in your URL so that you can look more deeply into it and then share it later. So I'm dropping one right now and taking you to a blog that Purium has created, Corporate, Purium Corporate, talking about specifically gluten-free with Purium. So when I had first enrolled nine years ago, my direct enroller had celiac. And so when she had told me that, well, I told her I had very difficult debilitating gut health issues. She said, that's okay. I had, I have celiac and, and let's, let's delve into this information together. Let's learn together on how we can help people with the most difficult digestive issues with these products to really thrive. And so um, this is a myth buster um, article. And there are three different myths that people might think about gluten that we want to illuminate and just have you shift a little bit. So the first one is that wheat free equals gluten free. Not true. So fact, products with wheat free on the label should be should be free of uh, on the label should be free of wheat, but likely contain barley or rye. And I know Kimberly had mentioned this in her article and also Sherry, but just um, otherwise the company would be labeling them gluten-free. So wheat-free is just something as a, as a label you want to avoid. Um, look for the words gluten-free. Um, another myth is that gluten makes you fat. <laughs> um, everybody who's looking for weight loss is looking for all the things that they could avoid to focus on. Well, it's not so much that. In fact, sometimes gluten-free breads have more calories, more sugar to make them palatable. But to be honest, um, gluten does not make you fat, according to Kristen Kirkpatrick, um, who is a registered dietitian. And she um, says that calories actually are what makes you fat, regardless of where those calories are coming from, whether they are from brown rice or which is gluten-free or from a wheat bagel. So it's really about the calories that, were, that it's coming from um, because, um, and if you eat more calories in a day than you use, then extra calories will be stored as fat. So the third myth is, is it's impossible to dine out when following a, a gluten-free diet. So just some of the things that we're saying here in this article is that um, the questions to ask at a restaurant depend upon what's being ordered. So the important thing is to remember to ask about each and every ingredient in the dish. <laughs> um, it's also important to ask how the dish is being prepared. Was the same oil, for example, used to fry the French fries and the mozzarella as, or the onion rings as my dish? Um, if that could lead to a classic case of cross-contacts, cross-contamination. Um, and ask about the surfaces, equipment, utensils, and the dish that it came in contact with, um, especially if you are celiac or very specifically um, uh, triggered. So looking ahead at the menu also helps to alleviate some of the stress. So once a week, my family, I allow them to eat out. And um, beforehand, we always look at menus. And it's easy to find any menus these days online. So we can look at and even call into the restaurant. So what does Purium do to address gluten-free? Um, well, our raw materials are in a gluten-free product um, and they're tested for gluten and must be less than 20 parts per million PPM. Um, they must have that amount or less. Our quality assurance team tests gluten internally and we have dedicated many resources to ensure our gluten tolerant community can feel safe <laughs> of on using designated Purium gluten free products. And it's true when I met, when many of my clients who were celiac and they started out embarking on their journey, they were not sensitive to our biomedic. We do have a specific tab when you go to our iShop Purium site that is specific for gluten free. So take a look at that or um, shop with your friends and clients. So biomedic and gluten, coming back to our prized probiotic, um, according to the gold seal of approval, gold seal by the detox project, we are the glyphosate detox solution. And we have combined three unique ingredients to support rebuilding the compromised microbiome, which I had for many years prior to this, and goodness, did it really make a difference in my biome. So the first one is a patented super prebiotic. It's 
Um, it's from a fraction of wheat germ, which is proven to specifically support the rebuilding of the aerobic bacteria colonies that trigger our immunity. Um, the second is the humic ore and fulvic acid, very potent, and it helps to feed the vital minerals directly to the gut and chelate awake toxins that together allow the villi to regenerate and grow back. And the third is the lactospore. This is the specific bacteria from the microbiome that uses that it uses to eliminate toxins and stop the poisoning of your body. So very key ingredient. Um, what's also important in this article is to say in this study conducted regarding gluten in biomedic, the conclusion was one would have to ingest almost 10 pills of the biomedic per day to be exposed to the same amount of gluten contained in a single serving of gluten-free pasta gluten-free pasta, um, and over 500 pills to reach the threshold established in the American Society for Clinical Nutrition in 2007. So you are secure. Sherry, I'm going to move to the Allo Digest topic because, you know, I'm on a roll. <laughs> Why not? I'll put it into the chat, but it is also a very excellent aid to have. Um, I'm going to share it in the chat as well. Um, I love this product, goodness, and it's paired so nicely with Power Shake. So if you've never tried that, please try it today um, or order it so you can try it. But Allo Digest is the digestive support that we have, and it's in the in the form of a dehydrated um, powder. So it's excellent for gastric reflux, upset stomach, um, gas, ache. Anyone who needs a little extra digestive support will definitely be served with the aloe vera that's present. Um, and what I love is going into these links. We have fact sheets. And really what I love is they go through all the different ingredients. And why is it so important is because indigestion and gut-related concerns are the growing issue in America at this time. And probiotics are a norm, but prebiotics are also on the rise. And most yogurts and probiotic infused juices are expensive. They have a short shelf life and they must be refrigerated. Antacid and liquid syrups can take up pantry space and honestly are filled with junk. Um, and if you look down the aisle of any of those um, grocery stores, they are maxed with all the different brands. Why not use Whole Foods? Why not try an aid that is uh, not diluted, chemical free, and it truly does work. And um, so it has, it's packed with polysaccharides with a base of organic coconut water and lots of digestive enzymes. So this is something that um, promotes the digestion and immune function because the shikmati pathway, immune, immune support is key. And this, again, with gut health, assists in absorption. And this is so, so, so important. So I have this up and I just want to share what's with wheat. We did a wonderful Million Mom Movement interview of Cindy O'Meara, who um, is the founder, filmmaker, and best-selling author for um, uh, for what's with wheat. So take a look at that too. <laughs> There's so much information I want to share in this packed call, but um, I pass it back to you. Thank you, Carmela. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our ionic elements. And okay, so so coupled with our allo digest, of course, we have ionic elements. So what do we need to know about this synergistic product? So much to know about it. Of course, if you attended Dave's call on Wednesday, he went into a whole lot of detail. And I love his calls because there's always something, I always learn something new, I always come away with a little tidbit of something at the very least oftentimes it's a whole lot more but always more information on all of these amazing superfoods so every day we lose electrolytes right so you might have heard the word thrown around in a commercial for your favorite water or exercise drink isn't that the truth but what exactly is an electrolyte and why is it so important to replenish them well electrolytes are little electrically charged ions found in our bodies and each one helps send signals throughout the body and aids in the operation of our brain, our nerves and our muscles. So some of the most commonly uh, known electrolytes are sodium, chlorine, 
potassium, magnesium, and calcium. So these electrolytes help balance fluid in the body affecting our blood pressure. And they also regulate glucose levels, the immune system, and the body's pH levels, which is of course so important and determined by your body's alkalinity. The optimal pH level is 7.4 out of 14 and anything under seven is considered acidic. And acidic is where we know that dis-ease could start to happen. And that's where inflammation is rising in our bodies. And we know that when our bodies are acidic, they've reached the level of imbalance. So when levels drop, health risks increase. Alkalinity has been connected to issues involving the skin, sleep, body weight, and even chronic conditions. How do we lose electrolytes? Well, we lose them in many ways. Um, as you age, of course, our bodies naturally lose water and a few other possible, and a few possible signs of electrolyte imbalance is muscle aches and joint pain, digestive issues, dizziness, fatigue and restlessness, and frequent body aches. Um, sorry, I did skip over here. So how do we lose electrolytes? Well, there's many different ways that we can lose them in addition to as we grow older, um, but it's um, healthy, uh, even if you're an athlete, you're still vulnerable to losing electrolytes, right? Okay. So illnesses involving vomiting, diarrhea, or anything that require the use of antibiotics, diuretics can all deplete your body of electrolytes as well. And actually we know that some of these issues greatly affect our gut microbiome as well. So we're starting to see why electrolytes, why ionic elements is such a key, uh, factor, such a key, um, superfood to include in our gut repair. So how we best support our electrolytes. The most common way the average American increases electrolytes is by drinking overly processed sports drinks. But is that the healthiest way? We know for a fact that it is not. Considering the added sugars and all the artificial additives found in most sports drinks, um, the answer is obviously no, because we know that those things actually further right, uh, damage our gut. So we have the organic alternative, and that is fulvic acid and an acid found in, it's an acid found in nature, might just be as effective, if not more so. And I would say more so. This acid is normally found from the microbial uh, metabolism process in plants, earth, soil, and natural bodies of water. It can help boost nutrients and helps your body absorb probiotics, antioxidants, minerals, and electrolytes more efficiently. And again, we're tying in the absorption, right? What our gut needs to do and what our gut has a very difficult time doing, especially when we have some of um, these issues like celiac. So it, it can also support healthy digestion and brain function. So fulvic acid is the main ingredient in ionic elements. And of course, there are all links here that you can click to go more in depth which, which we encourage you all to do, especially formulated combination of fulvic acid and ocean trace minerals. Ionic elements can and may support the body's response to aging, help hair, skin, and nail growth, and support immune function. And of course, when it is paired with aloe digest, helps support a healthy gut. Now I'm going to share, and we are headed to um ooh, okay I'm really excited I see that we're almost at the top of the hour so this was definitely an information packed call I really would love to have Kimberly come on um she was my guest for today uh Kimberly is so well known within our community not just as an amazing leader in Puriam but as someone who's really out there really making a difference in the world. And I know that the first time I heard uh, Kimberly Sanders speak was when I was very new to Purian. Um, and I don't, I don't think she knows just what an impact she had on me and um, my journey so far in Purian. So I know that, you know, we are getting close to the top of the hour, but if you'll just hang tight with us for a few minutes, I know that Kimberly is used to speaking on these calls and I know that she'll be able to share her story with us in just a couple of minutes. So Kimberly, if you'd unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Sherry. That's so exciting. This is my heart and soul, right? I had had food related issues since I was born. I was allergic to my mother's milk, sugar, wheat, soy, dairy, 
everything across the board. So the way that the Million Mom Movement is sharing to share with people and how we walk people into this lifestyle is really what I've been living since I was a child because I was so sick for so long. And then I come to find out if I really think about it, I had a ton of strep throat in my early time. And so I was on so many antibiotics all the time back then. So on top of whatever I was born into with my gut situation, then tons of antibiotics. And, um, but I did choose to be plant-based at nine years old. So then that kind of put me on this trajectory to want to find really clean vegetables all the time. And so, um, you know, coming here with everyone, it's really, um, it's really great to be able to say that I use the ionic elements and the aloe digest. I can't wait until Perium has the aloe digest in the large bag. If anyone's listening, I would love that. And, um, so I love that I can have the things that Perium makes, but I, I really just, I keep seeing what happens if I put some biomedic into me or even the women's defense, something is not in balance with me. I, I don't have, I don't think I'm celiac. I'm not a person that goes to doctors to have them tell me what's going on with me ever. So my hand will go numb if I eat specific things like wheat, soy, um, sometimes like I just, I have to be eating the cleanest food on this planet else. My body is just not going to have it. And before I knew this, I would have razor blades shredding through my shoulders and in my hands at like three o'clock in the morning. That's usually when this situation happens. I don't know what it is, but even just the other day, I didn't read the label properly on Mary's gone crackers. Normally I can have those, but they're like, I was up at three o'clock in the morning. My fingers are twice as big and it just, it feels like razor blades shredding through my hands and they're numb. I used to sleep with my arm off the bed back in the day before I understood what was going on. I couldn't start work back in the day when I did hair, I couldn't even hold the hair in between my fingers. So I don't know what the situation is, but I know if I keep it really clean, which luckily we have the cleanest food on the planet here. And if I just keep going with it, then um, everything is good, but it's, it's pretty amazing. And the thing is, is some people in this work say, oh, I have to try the product in order to sell it. I have to try it. I have to make sure that it's okay. And it's like, Actually, we don't. We can look at the ingredients and we can see that we have the cleanest food source on the planet. And unless you have some sort of random situation, I don't even think it's called celiac, which if I had some sort of testing done, I don't know what it is because everyone saw I can eat a piece of bread and it's fine. So no idea. But we can share these superfoods with everyone, whether we take the biomedic or not. And, you know, you just really, really dig into what people's needs are and what they wish for. But 98% of the people out there can do biomedic, but if not, then you can do the ionic elements, which have the fulvic and humic acid in there. And then the 72 different trace minerals, and then our amazing aloe digest, which has Jerusalem artichoke inulin in there. And so with those both combined, you're getting a very similar um, system that the biomedic has to offer people that can have um, biomedics. So, you know, get it into them. It's very rare that someone couldn't have it. So even people with celiac, sometimes, sometimes it's not exactly celiac. So, you know, little bits by little bits, maybe even having people start with the epigenous kids because it has a half a serving of the biomedic in there. And maybe that could be the way that they start adding that and seeing what's possible. So um, anyway, I just am appreciative to be here and thanks for letting me be with you all. Oh, thank you so much for that share, Kimberly. And you know what? You raise a really good point. Like, it's really not about the goal is not to decide, right? Celiacs, not celiacs. I mean, really, what's even more important than that um, is just really paying attention to how you feel. And like you're saying, and like we, I know when we spoke briefly about this uh, the other day, I said, like, it's amazing that you're so in tune with your body. You're so connected that you are listening to those cues that your body is giving you. And so, and it's great that we happen to have this other option that you can be using um, that's helping your body, helping your gut, all the same. So thank you so much for that share. And now I'm going to pass it over to Naeva to do our call to action. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sherry. And thank you, Kim, for sharing your story. And what a information-packed call that I have learned so much on this call today. And always learning. And we just love compiling all this information for you all. So I'd love to know 
who hosted or watched kiss the ground last weekend or throughout this week drop me a k in the comments because this was a really important topic and so many of us took advantage of watching this movie either as a group or individually awesome i see some k's coming in i'm so happy you guys took advantage of that call to action from corporate because that is an ongoing thing that we can do. If you had your first Kiss the Ground watch party, you can have a second and a third watch party and keep that ball rolling because it's such an easy way to get people in alignment with what we have here at Purium. And everything that we have here is grown in small regenerative farms. And even the compostable packaging can help to regenerate the soil. So it's a win-win on all levels. And if you didn't know, I think we all know here, but um, Common Ground is the sequel to Kiss the Ground and it's out in theaters across the country. And so if you haven't yet, I want to invite you all to look at this um, page, commongroundfilm.org, and you can watch the little trailer. And if you don't see it on this list, you can demand it at your local theater. So what I would like you to do is go through this list and think of people that you know in these specific areas. So we are the Million Mom Movement here, and what we're all about is that we are a thousand people from a hundred different communities, each sharing this word with at least 10 other families. And so weekly, we want you to think of 10 new people that you haven't reached out to, to, you know, continue to spread this message far and wide. So think of 10 people that you know in these areas um, and reach out to them and let them know, like, if you know people in Chicago, Illinois, let them know that right now this movie is going to be playing there this week. And in Hollywood, California, that one's going to be a really jam packed one. I know that the film producers, I believe, are going to be at the one in Ojai this week as well. So if you know people in Ojai or Boulder, Colorado or Cincinnati, um, all of these places will be playing common ground this week. So think of the people, you know and reach out to them let them know that this movie is playing encourage them to go watch it and the list goes on if you don't see your town on this list then your second call to action is to go request the film in your local theater so right down here it's at the top of the page and the bottom and you can just demand a screening at one of your local theaters, or maybe you have other venues that show films occasionally. So get creative. There's community centers and different places that might be willing to show a film like this, an educational film. And so I'd love for you all to just take a look at this list. If it's in your city, mark the date on your calendar and invite friends to join you for that movie. And if it's not playing in your local area, then get it playing in your local area. And of course, invite anybody that you know in these towns where it's currently playing. And also, I want to remind you all to keep coming back to this uh, page and looking at it because they keep updating it. So the, already since yesterday when I was looking at this, they've added additional cities and additional dates here at the bottom. So um, I want to encourage you all to continue coming back and looking at what they've added to this calendar. And this is going to help move our movement forward because like I shared, what they're sharing about here in these videos is exactly what we're standing for here at Purium. And so we just want to spread this message far and wide. And Sherry, did you want to go ahead and close this out or do you want me to continue? Pass it back to you. Thank you, Naeva. So um, don't forget that this Wednesday, we have our Wealthy Wednesday. So join us for that. And then on Fierce Friday next week, we're going to have a very special Thanksgiving episode. So stay tuned for that. And again, thank you everyone for watching. And uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Naeva. I think this is the first time I close out. So, okay. So don't forget to like, follow, and share. Uh, you find us on Facebook, at, at, of course, at the Million Mom Movement and join our community Facebook group page, the Million Mom Movement official, if you haven't already. We're also on Instagram. And uh, we, and don't forget, of course, most importantly, uh, to subscri subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's where you get access to all of these replays. So oh, don't forget to join us every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and if you are brand new to this call today, please don't forget to reach back out to the person who invited you here. And we look forward to seeing everyone next week. Thank you.